So we start with the next session. We talk about uh, new mappers in the previous one, and it's naturally to, to start talking uh, again about that, about the uh, same limits for new account from Roland. I give you the word. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, the background of this talk is that we had seen an unprecedented uh, wave of uh, vandalism in August this year uh, by Ukrainian map mappers. And the analysis stopped uh, just before that to check whether there were legitimate users um, that have similar editor and editing patterns. And so in particular, this is not in response to the Israel wave. And there's also one thing I would like to um, express my gratitude is that uh, our website developers are actively working on having a rate limited in place for new users. And I absolutely support this. And um, the numbers for the moment don't, don't fit, but um, I have just made this analysis down to um, 10,000 users uh, for the first hour, uh, 10,000 objects for the first hour, because this is what I could check manually. I'm absolutely in support to have even uh, stricter limits, um, because it's more fine tuning between um, what's bearable for the system administration to have a stable system. Okay, now let's start with the analysis from August. So, so the question is, um, long before the incident has happened, is uh, people talk about whether there had been vandalism in uh, OpenStreetMap. If you try to work with the data, it's hard to find vandalism anywhere. It's, uh, there are a lot of other things superseding this, and um, vandalism is, uh, isn't the core problem. And this is mostly because the, um, our vandalism um, deterrence process, or more the uh, repair process uh, for bad data that would be much more than the vandalized data works very well with, uh, in principle, the community doing peer repair or doing peer rewards, plus the data working group as the ultimate instance, who is uh, very competent in handling um, disputes. So for long years, this had never been seen as a serious problem from the community that we um, that we have some bad edits and even less that we have willful vandalism. So, yeah, there are just for illustration of this, there are reversion tools and um, a lot of community work workers, um, community members outside even the data working group are able to, um, able to use these tools and the data working group even more. So most bad edits get uh, reverted within minutes to hours. So um, what happened in the last 11 years, um, in principle, the project is 19 years old, but uh, for legal reasons, it's uh, easier just to work with the uh, data after the license change, which is now 11 years ago. So you don't have to, to make any, uh, any fancy merging. And um, in this 11 years, we had seen one uh, quite uh, visible um, impact, which was uh, someone was able to change for quite a short time the label of New York City, um, swap it out for Eutropolis, and uh, unfortunately, there must have been someone made a copy from this for a quite uh, visible map in that moment, and so we got a little bit bad news, but um, that had been all, even that had been fixed quite quickly, and people understood that uh, it's not in our database, it's more like uh, the copy lagging behind. There had been one mapper who had really, um, in had been really in conflict, uh, any two, uh, so severely that we uh, finally had removed him entirely from the project. It's uh, the only such case of in 11 years. And uh, there are a couple of annoying people around there, but all in all, it's uh, compared to the size of the world, it's, um, it's few things. And um, what we see much more often are uh, technical things. Um, there had even been a JOSEN version, which has been um, blocked very quickly, that uh, swapped uh, latitude and longitude, and that made a lot of, uh, a lot of damage. And um, there had been uh, editing software, which was a little bit too pres uh, prescriptive in um, nudging people towards uh, um, certain texts that had also been contained in the, in the meantime. Um, there had been some sweet shops who had uh, done more damage than good by um, clumsy ways of corporate editing. Um, but I think it's also that um, the corporations we have seen editing in the last years had got uh, 
understood that lesson and uh, we have, don't see much more of this and um, some other technical problems. So there exist incidents where we have bad data, but uh, in all such cases before, last, uh, before this August, we have been able to revert this within minutes to um, sometimes hours. I think we were always under a day. So what happened is um, we had, um, it's probably not a party to that war, but uh, more wonders to use the uh, tension that this uh, place, uh, that when you would get. And we had an event where, um, from our point of perspective, a couple of, uh, or I think it were thousands of accounts that had been uh, pre-created, had been suddenly using to large scale remove um, name names colon root text from um, from a lot of objects mostly it was in ukraine but uh, in principle more worldwide and that found global backlash and um, people don't didn't want that vandalism but it was the first time where we have seen really someone in coordinated way damaging um, open street map data and apparently willful and um, we had seen a worse thing um, in just some, I think some, yeah, must be some weeks ago. Now, um, we're in Israel, um, someone also has uh, vandalized data and even in a more sophisticated way, I, where they stacked uh, multiple versions of uh, damaged object on top of each other. So that's the usual reward um, attempts got, uh, got wrong. Partly because it was just so much, partly because uh, it had been more difficult because they have uh, just posed these uh, traps and uh, the attackers had posed these traps so that the usual reward scripts made, uh, made more cars than they fixed. And ultimately um, it was resolved by um, the data working group asking everyone to, to um, stop reverting on their own and then systematically reverting what remains. And um, at that point, it was pretty clear that the vandals had been able to damage the map far too fast um, than we could, what we could um, repair. And so a couple of ideas, this is mostly already from the Ukraine incident, had been, um, had been appeared. But uh, the problem with this is people had a lot of opinion what, uh, what we should do. And uh, few to know people, uh, or few to know um, of these um, posts had any research behind it, what, uh, what's actually in the data. So this was the idea to this talk, to look into the data. Are there legitimate, legitimate um, edits where new users uh, create or more than 10,000 or more than uh, thousands of objects versions in the first hour or in the first day of their activity, just to figure out um, do we catch people? We um, do we catch harmless or uh, benign people um, with that, or or is it just that we throw out or impede vandals? And so the conflict here is not really between uh, catching vandalism. It's uh, the conflict here is really we want to slow down the vandalism such that reverting would be a viable process and much less painful, versus we have the risk that um, if we have an unfriendly first contact with a productive mapper, that we scare away the mapper on first contact. This fine print has a lot of implications. For example, if we talk about imports, there's no risk on that we eliminate people because people who do imports on, or who should, do, should be able to do imports are those that had already a normal mapping account, had experience with OpenStreetMap, and we won't scare them away if they see an error message that they are over the rate limit. They will absolutely understand if they are responsible importers uh, what the rate limit is. So it's really about first contacts and we could um, put uh, rate uh, importers outside the um, outside of, out of scope and um, yeah, so time to look at the data. The first thing is what we should measure. Um, we have the concept of change sets. We could look into the change set, change and so on and so on. But it's easy to um, make up change set metadata the way such it would escape the um, the detection. So the only real thing you want to look like uh, look uh, after are the created object versions. 
The technical definition for this is the way you create a new object version even if you delete the object. You create two versions if you touch and if you create an afterwards touch an object. So um, you have a relatively universal definition for all activity that people can do with your count object versions. So the next interesting question is when to measure. I mean, the obvious uh, point for a newbie would be to measure when the account is created, but that's not a good idea. Although the majority of accounts had been used within the first hour of being um, created, there are quite huge numbers, um, and each of these boxes, uh, each of these um, green, yellow, and red uh, bars are um, about 200,000 uh, 200, users, so it's not a negligible minority. There are quite a lot of users who, for whatever reason, use their account a lot later than they have created them. So it's definitely important to look at the first edit and not at the account creation date. And then the other thing is to look how the created uh, object versions distribute. This is a little bit tricky because you get, um, if you try to use a standard diagram, you get a very sharp um, L curve where you see some skyrocketing at the left uh, corner and um, a very long, basically zero tail. So um, I try to use a diagram that's somewhat useful. What you see is the obvious, um, the vast majority of users creates within the first hour only less than 100 objects. And um, if you go for a thousand, then you have probably 99% um, of all users uh, within that bracket. And, uh, but I've just explicitly written down the numbers for the um, for the other users. Um, there are two, 22 that ever in this 10-year project history managed to create more than 100,000 objects in the first um, in the in the first hour, and respectively 585 for um, b between 10,000 and 100,000. And uh, you can read the figures. So. Um, these are quickly getting sizable numbers where you couldn't just uh, manually look into each of them. So um, I resorted to look into the, um, the 10,000 limit for the, um, for the first hour and also into a, 40, 000, a limit of 40,000 um, created object versions uh, for the first 24 hours. And um, because much more would be manually unbearable. Even then, I filtered as much as possible. We have about 600 users to screen. In fact, I think it's 737 or so. And um, the first thing is you observe, after the Ukraine event, uh, we had seen some robust action from the system administrators, rightly so. And these users are not just inactive or have self-deleted they are literally wiped out from the database. So you simply get no information about them from the main database, no longer. It's not a problem. I mean, it were really vandals. And um, then I filtered out everyone with less than 100, 100 changes. Remember, our goal is to, um, to ensure that we do not scare off long-term mappers. And if they only ever you know, during their lifetime have created 100 changes, these are no long-term mappers. It's just, these are hit-and-run mappers, and while it's nice to have them, it's not a big damage to the community if they are, if we scare away some of them. I filtered out everyone self-declaring import or secondary um, account um, or whoever indicated by the profile patch or the uh, the um, display name that it's an import, uh, import account, and then ultimately looked at what remained. So this gets, in the end, a list of 43 users out of these 734 users that uh, passed the criteria of uh, 10,000 in the first hour um, plus 40 or 40,000 in the first 24 hours. And what, that's basically what you see out of the 43 most plausible uh, manual long-term users, which are only part of these 700. It's still that only a fraction is maybe liquidated. Um, some are outright uh, spam, and you just see it um, if you do a deeper analysis. But there are only these four, and I think in, in total it are less than 10, that um, might be legitimate users, and 
This is my personal judgment. This is not any scientific um, analysis, these, um, this color classification. And to give, you, to give you an idea, these are again the numbers, what happened after the filtering. These are the edits um, where I say this might be legitimate. In the upper left corner, this is someone who later on mapped a lot of buildings, addresses um, in apparently was a very close region, so probably uh, so apparently was local knowledge. Unfortunately, he started with um, land use as his first edit, and land use tends to be very large change sets. The second one is one where um, someone set a huge number of addresses, but um, if you look, look very closely, there are, uh, there are something like a deletion and some other slightly different edits. So apparently someone has cared to not just pour addresses into the database, but to do something sensible and to do edits. Some conflation might be a welcome user. And also this user had been long-term active in his hometown. And this down is more like um, a hot edit. This is, um, this might be one of the uh, three users, for example, for Senegal, also it's not, it's not Senegal, but one of these power users we don't want to miss that Pete has found. And um, so yes, we might get, um, we might get some. These are those who have um, fallen into the 24 hour limits. And this is one who has added a suburb, then decided that he would like to have the text of the suburb quite slightly different, and so created uh, two versions per, per each building. And another one was tracing a nature reserve. And so there are some users that might be scared off, but in the end, um, from a cost-benefit analysis between the reputational damage that comes from we cannot control this outright large-scale vandalism against, we might have missed 10 users in 10 years. It's still absolutely legit to get this uh, limit of 10,000. And uh, I'm, totally, um, I'm totally going with that even a lower limit would still be a good balance. And I'm looking forward that we get this implemented and merged, this uh, vandalism projection. And I again would like to thank the, our um, website developers for the quick response and uh, making the um, OSM database much more uh, resilient. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you for all the analysis. Uh, I think the, the limit you propose uh, at the end, uh, 10,000 objects modified in one hour, it's clearly not a human. Well, that's the point why I did the analysis. There are some corner cases where people are human. That is this one thing that I've seen. One who, somebody who had traced a large nature reserve and then finally decided to upload it in one go. Wherever this was the first edit, these are very few people, but it's absolutely plausible that it, this one was a human, and so on and so on with these suburbs and so on. So um, this might be humans. There are enough patterns that are clearly not humans, but there might be this. There might be these ten users in ten years who managed to make prepare a large edit before they ever used their account and upload this large edit as their first edit, basically. So it's an edge uh, case. Uh, but should we consider that the edge are the edge case or that the edge should even be lower than the edge case? Uh, as a first uh, chance set or chance sets in one hour having 10,000 objects modified uh, from a new contributor does something unusual. It definitely looks fishy, but uh, the point is... This there was no obvious um, malice involved, so um, I would tend to believe that it was really a human. But I think I would prefer to also hear other questions. Uh, if we impose some limits, uh, do we have a clear way uh, to notify user 
like, okay, we will apply your edits later if we manually check them, yada, yada, yada. So do we at least have the clear way of communication with the new users why their like, edits might not be applied straight away if they hit those limitations? Two details here. The first one is um, users interact with the uh, database we are editing software. So we must rely on each editor, each um, developer of each editing software to come up with a sensible error message. And I'm pretty confident that this will work out because these are um, responsible, insane people who develop the editing method and they have, um, they have mastered far more difficult problems. And the other thing is, in principle, it could happen if you have a large change set, being a new user or otherwise, if you let it uh, on your hard disk for 24 hours, there might have been, there might arise conflicts and uh, that's painful to resolve. But on the other hand, it's just an unproductive way to, to edit. So, um, if you run into this, it's probably you shouldn't have done it in the first place. It's more like making clear that it's um, an unhelpful way to start a mapping career. But uh, it's not like um, it makes sense to, to let it slip through just because um, we, are, we have difficulties to communicate with the person. We must get the communication right and not compromise um, the policy. Thank you. Um, you picked the, a selection of accounts. Uh, you, you excluded imports, but I, I think you still got an import in your edge cases. Um, we ask people when they make an import to create a dedicated account. If we were to whitelist anyone with a username of underscore import, Vandals would do that. Um, and I was wondering, if you had numbers without the picking of the of the accounts well the cl oh. if you keep going back yeah the closest one might be this where i have the number how much i have um, sorted out based on itself it's called here self declared bot accounts because you have also clean up bots and so on but um, this is the number of accounts I excluded from analysis because they self-declared as uh, being secondary mechanical or import accounts. Thank you. Uh, my question uh, would be whether the limits would actually prevent uh, the vandalism. Um, because I think if your intent is to vandalize and you know that there is a limit, you will work around it, right? So if I understand you, in the case that you presented at uh, the last slide, I basically have to do an edit and then wait an hour or a day and then I can do what I want, or? Um, the trick is that uh, we run into the problem that just uh, people were quicker vandalizing or the attackers were quicker vandalizing than we were, so the data working group mostly in the end were reverting things. And while there's some things we could do on reverting, there's also a downside of pressing um, a huge number of changes just for nothing through the database of the processing chains. So um, the whole point here is you slow down it to a way where it's um, comfortable to revert it. It's not a silver bullet to, um, to make a revert. It's really only just to, to slow down. You could see it I don't know the English words, there are these uh, bumpers in the streets that enforce that people don't run too fast. It's, it's a little bit that way. I wonder, before this PR is merged, right, do we need um, a way for or data working group, I guess, to see all the blocked accounts so we know if the limits are too low or too high or something like that? Because I'm a bit worried that people will get rejected, especially hot uh, contributors, and we will not know about them uh, right now. That's a good point. We should work on tooling, but I think I would coordinate this with the data working group, because again, if it's just 
Don't forget, I have chosen my limit because it was painful to do the remaining um, manual analysis. And we should not establish a regime where we um, burden the data group with much more work. So um, there should be good tooling, but in the end, I would, uh, well, I will um, be keep contact with the data working group to ensure that the maintenance workload is low because it's, it's a critical point there. So um, that's the whole point of setting the limit rather um, rather generous that we don't just we, that we are just sure that we don't catch people or not that many people, but um, in the end we don't have the capacity to really review a lot of um, editors and so we must uh, avoid to get into that situation. Yeah. Okay, thank you. It, it was less a question and more I was just going to um, comment on, on what is actually in the, the, the PR that we have kind of more or less ready to go now, which is um, there's a number of features. The goal here is, as Roland was saying, really just to slow down things enough that the data working group can react before there are a million edits. Um, so it's pretty limits. The limits are not exactly what Roland's been talking about here. Um, they actually start somewhat lower, but they at least at the moment they do, but they ramp up over the first week or so. Um, but also they will be reduced if people get reported and the DWG can then block them hopefully before they can do too much damage. That's the, the, the main goal here. Uh, and obviously we're going to be monitoring it to see or to try and see if we're hitting people that we, you know, we don't want to hit. Um, and it does also add the ability to mark accounts as imports, which then get a much higher limit. So people who are, who are doing imports can kind of ask, ask us to, to mark those new accounts so they don't get immediately blocked. Yeah. Thank you.